everybody joins me, and we have a great event today. So with that, I'm going to get this going, introduce our first uh, speaker. It's actually going to be an invitation for us, Brother Lee. He's actually a chaplain here at the Capitol. He's also a uh, missionary to America, and we're proud to have him here as well, Mr. Brother Lee. Woo! Before we do anything else, uh, would join me, uh, if you like, in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today uh, thankful that we can meet in this place freely and openly, Father, without fear of persecution. And we ask, Father, that this right uh, be preserved for another generation of Americans. Uh, we ask you to meet with us today, Father, guide each speaker, that we would say things which would be pleasing and right, Father. Uh, help us to do this in the spirit that you would have us to do it in. May you receive all glory and honor, Father. Uh, we ask that you would help us to honor your people. Uh, we ask, Father, for your blessing and your protection upon them. Uh, we ask, Father, that you will be with us and turn our nation back to you. All these things we pray in the powerful and precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, uh, again, my name is Brother Lee Watts. Uh, and I, a good way to remember my name is I'm Brother Watts' name. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I serve as the uh, chaplain here to the Capitol building. Uh, representing uh, not any particular uh, political party and uh, not my, my viewpoints. Uh, if anybody ever asks me, uh, you know, what do the churches in my district think about what's going on, my answer is I have no idea. Uh, I, I do not, I'm not the Bishop of Kentucky. Uh, and and my, my opinion doesn't really matter to a hell of beans. All that matters is what this book says. Uh, that's what matters. And so that's what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today, about what this book says about standing with Israel. Um, in, if you have your Bibles, if not, you can just take my word for it and read mine later. It says in the book of Genesis, chapter number 12 and verse number 3, uh, God is speaking to Abraham, the father of the nation of Israel. And this is what God says, a promise he gives. And we're included in this promise. It says, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. That's right. That is a promise that God made. Right. And it does not change with the passage of time. That's right. Uh, God says, I will bless those who bless you. You are going to be, you are, represent, you are Israel. And as long as America stands with Israel, then you know what? God says, I will bless them. Yeah. Uh, that is a promise he made to the other nations. And then, remember the reverse side of that. He says, and I will yeah. curse them that curse thee. Right. Mm -hmm. And the more we turn our back on Israel, the more things seem to happen. <laughs> uh, and so I have a little list here of some natural disasters that happen every time the United States pressures Israel to give up the land which <laughs> God said, this is your land, right. and Come he on. promised it to them. Come on. Uh, you will notice that I'm going to give a hard time to the Republicans and the Democrats. Good. Uh, because uh, God does not look on party. Uh, <laughs> he, he looks on the heart. So I'll even go this far and says, God does not look on your denomination. Uh, I am a Baptist. And uh, you know what? Nowhere do I see in the book it says, Thou shalt be a Baptist to go to heaven. <laughs> he looks on the heart and says, Did you accept my son, Jesus Christ? That's right. That's what's important. And he doesn't look at your political party or how you voted. All he looks is, What did you do with my son? And in today we're going to say, What did you do with my people, Israel? So let's look at a few examples here about uh, disasters relating in America to uh, us pressuring Israel to give up its promised land. Uh, let's start with this year, May the 18th. 2011, President Obama tells Israel it is the United States policy for Israel to go back to the borders it had in 1967 prior to the Six-Day War, which means they have to give up Jerusalem. Within 24 hours, the worst uh, tornado to ever strike the United States hits the city of Joplin, Missouri, killing hundreds of people. Less than 24 hours. April the 19th, 2010, President Obama says, quote, the United States will no longer automatically stand with Israel, end quote. The very next day, the oil rig explodes in the Gulf of Mexico. And they can't stop the oil flowing. There's millions of gallons lost, millions or billions of dollars are lost. October 30th, 1991, it's the Republicans' turn. President George Bush Sr. opens up the Madrid Peace Conference to consider what's called the Land for Peace deal in Israel's Middle East. Uh, as he's doing this, the perfect storm develops, and uh, it slams into the United States, uh, and it, it destroys most of the town of Kenny Bunkford, President Bush's hometown. 
August the 23rd, 1992, the, the talks resumed because they had to stop during the uh, hurricane there. Uh, and they said, Wait, Israel, you need to give up your land. Within 24 hours, Hurricane Andrew hits the United States, uh, which was the worst natural disaster to ever hit America at that time, costing $30 billion in damage. September the 28th, 1998, Secretary of the State Albright works with a deal where Israel would have to give up 13% of Judea and Samaria to the Palestinians. That same day, Hurricane George hits the United States uh, and slams into it. November the 30th, 1998, Yasser Arafat. Let me just pause right there. Yasser Arafat, one of the worst terrorists the world has ever known. And by the way, did you know he won the Nobel Peace Prize? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that something? There's some other people who won the Nobel Peace Prize, and I don't know why they won it either. But anyway, uh, November 30th, 1998, old Arafat, he comes to Washington to meet with then-President Clinton to raise money for a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. The United States promises $400 million. Uh, European nations promise $1.7 billion. On that same day, the Dow Jones drops 216 points, and the European market has its worst day in recorded history. We'll do just two more, because I don't want to belabor the point. Uh, let's see here. Um, August 2005. Jewish families are being evicted from their homes in Gaza communities in response to American policy and pressure that we have exerted by Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice for them to give up the land and move out of the Gaza communities. As the world watches, the Hurricane Katrina hits the United States and destroys whose hometown? Condoleezza Rice's hometown of New Orleans. I have pages of these things, but I'm not going to belabor the points reading all of them. Every time, every time that we pressure Israel, give up your land, God's promise comes true. Yeah. I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. And many of you say, how could a loving God do this? Well, a loving God says, you know what? I provided you my perfect plan. Yeah. I have told you this is how you can get a blessing. It's like my children. I tell them, hey, if you do this, you're, you know, we're going to go to Disney World. But if you do that, you're going to get grounded. You're going to be in trouble. Now, why do I do that? Why? Because I love my children. I don't want them to go out and do things that are going to harm them. And I send them warnings. The Bible and God has sent us many different warnings uh, through his book, through his men, through new things that he's made happen in the world. Today is a wonderful day for us not only to re recognize these things, but to add Israel to your personal prayer list. Every day, if you know, I think one of the ways that we can get God's blessings is when you go through, I'm hoping that you pray each day, your family, your nation, different things going on, you can add to that list the nation of Israel and say, first of all, Lord, will you protect them? Uh, will you help us to help protect them? Uh, do you realize that Israel votes with the United States in the United Nations, Israel votes with us 100% of the time. They, they vote with us more than the United, uh, United Kingdom or anybody else. Uh, and do you realize that more than all of the resolutions the United Nations has ever passed, 60% of them are condemning Israel. It would be about 75% if it wasn't for the vetoes of the United States. The world is united against one little land, and that's the land of Israel. This all was told that it was going to happen. If you read over in the Bible, in the book of Joel, uh, chapter 3, and verse number 2, it says, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people, for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. There have been six Arab-Israeli wars. The Israelis have won six of them. <laughs> but I was in the United States Air Force, which I, I did for 12 years after duty. Loved it. The, uh, thank you. I served as crew chief on the F-16 Fighting Falcon, wonderful aircraft. And uh, the only time our pilots have egos the size of Detroit, they really do. Uh, and it's well earned. I mean, they're, they're very good at what they do. But the only time I ever heard our pilots come back and they turn the jet back over to me and they say, these are the only guys who are better and can outfly us as the Israelis. <laughs> Nobody else. We will sell them our jet, they'll improve it, and then we got to buy it back from them because they made it so much better. <laughs> Israel, God will protect. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see, he said, I will protect America. No. He says, I will protect the nation and I will bless them that stands with them. Yeah. For the sake of our own nation, we need to stand with Israel. Yeah. 
Uh, if there's a symbol of democracy in, in that part of the world, it is Israel. Uh, and if, even if there wasn't the religious aspect, from merely a secular aspect, saying, hey, we want uh, you know, a, a place where we can have democracy and stability and a constant form of government, we should stand with Israel. And a lot of people say, well, the way to have peace is to Israel, you lay down your arms, and then you'll have peace. Anybody who thinks the way to have peace is to lay down your arms is, uh, I don't know how long it took you to make up this little world you live in, but that's not going to work. Peace through strength. Uh, as Ronald Reagan said, peace is the of firepower. I thank the Lord that each of you are here today. Uh, but this is only a small sample of uh, what we really need to do. I hope you'll take this message back uh, to, to your communities, to your, your people, your friends, your family, to your churches, and you'll spread this. And if we could add Israel to our daily prayer list and get hundreds, yeah, even thousands of Kentuckians praying for Israel, I think we can get a blessing upon our state and upon our nation. Uh, thank you all very much for your time. All right. God bless America.